No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm bringing you the performer of the year. Emma Rose is in the building. Hi, nice to be here. <laughs> I, I watched you go up and uh, win the award when we were at the AVN uh, Awards. And also we spoke briefly on camera for some TikTok type content. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, you mentioned that you'd be down to come on the podcast. And I was like, you know what? I am interested. <laughs> I want to know what makes you tick. Let's go. <laughs> Is that okay? Uh, yeah, of course. Of course. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> cool. So um, you're from where? I'm from Florida originally. I actually grew up on a farm. A farm uh, in Florida? It, yeah, in the oh, middle okay. of nowhere. So, like, between Tampa and Orlando, like Polk County. And you would never believe that there's just farms <laughs> really okay yeah but um i went to college out there my marketing degree and i went between a marketing and shipping marketing and shipping shipping always made more money uh and then a director kept on bugging me and bugging me like shoot with me shoot with me and i'm like no 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 finally um in 2020 i decided to finally shoot for porn and that's how i got into the industry <laughs> wow and so how old are you uh, i turned 27 next month oh okay she's still pretty young okay yeah. interesting so all right so at what point did you decide that you were going to transition? Like, were you what, what were you identifying as throughout most of your life? Yeah. Um, so I transitioned at 21. Okay. Um, in the middle of my semester of college, that was my senior year. One day, I was like, uh, I went through therapy and everything during this time, but like, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't so tell you, any of my teachers. How, how do you do that? You go to what, like, a nurse or like some kind of counselor <laughs> or something, and you're like, listen, this is how I'm feeling, and yeah. then they make you like stew with it and just think about it for a well, while. Um, I know that when I transitioned, there was a lot of more rules and like mm. regulations. I feel like so I had to live um, as my preferred gender for a year. Um, talk to a therapist literally every week and like they wouldn't just give you hormones mm. uh, so I had to like literally t check in how I'm feeling how everything's going and then after a year of living as my uh, gender then they give you hormones mm -hmm. so it's not like over overnight and then on top of that they don't give you the dose that you want so they just start you off so slow like two milligrams of estrogen a day without any, any testosterone blockers and then they build up from there but that was seven years ago but does this send a ton of people to the black market because i've done steroids before so i could tell you where to get all that shit you know uh, and i'm talking like, about like a long ass yeah. time ago but i know bodybuilder dudes who could tell you exactly where to go yeah. in beverly hills if you want oh, to get whatever sure. you need for yeah sure. uh, i think that some girls choose black market but um as long as you're getting your levels tested and like going to an endocrinologist i think that's fine right Wow. Okay. So would you say that you're somebody who had been thinking about this since like as soon as you could think about anything or when did it start to pop up in your so, brain? Um, it's so I've never even met anyone who was trans until I was 19. So okay. throughout my whole entire life, um, my parents were really Southern and I grew up really Southern. Um, I always saw myself as like either a woman growing up, like I didn't know the word trans. I just knew that I was like, I feel different. I don't feel like like a gay boy because I also liked girls. Mm. Uh, so I had girls and boys growing up. And so I saw myself as like a wife or as like a businesswoman or just always as a woman. And I thought that was just a normal thing for like like kids. And it wasn't. Mm. Um, and then it wasn't until um, I was 17 that I started like hanging out with more people that from the LGBT community. And then it wasn't until 19 when I met someone who was trans. And then it finally clicked, and I was like, okay, this actually makes sense. Really? And did yeah. it click, like, 100%, or was it like, oh, maybe this is it for me? Like, did it just immediately make perfect sense? It felt like I was talking to somebody that, like, I knew my whole life, mm. because every experience they said was the same, the same, the same. Because in Florida, um, in Central Florida, it's pretty repressed, and, like, um, it wasn't really liberal. Um, it's a really, probably, like, red county, I guess. Right. But um, it wasn't anything like today. <laughs> right. Wow. So that's, that's so interesting. Okay. Uh, I don't want to like pry too deep. <laughs> no worries. If you had never figured it out mm -hmm. and you had been forced to live your life as a man, mm -hmm. how happy do you think that you would have been able to be as a human being? Or do you think it would have been fundamentally like a betrayal of who you are as a person and you would have, you, you would have just had mm -hmm. to figure it out? You wouldn't have yeah. been able to live that way. 
I honestly just felt like a part was missing from me. I felt mm. like it, nothing was right. Like even with, I feel like before my my past life, before I transitioned, I still didn't even like fit in with, I guess, like guys before because it was just, it was just off. The energy was off. Um, I always had a feminine energy, even though when I was younger, I was very masculine mm. because of my parents and my upbringing. Right. But um, it took a long time to really come to terms with who I was because even after I figured out and like I was like, oh, I am trans i was still fighting it because i was like i do not want to live this life like no one wants to choose to be trans on purpose i feel like in my opinion but um it really took a lot of battling and also a lot of therapy to really get to where i am today see but that's that's what's so interesting is that you hear a lot of people including like i did a trans panel uh, recently where you have a lot of people who are pretty they seem to feel like the trans thing that's kind of going on is a little bit of like a social contagion where mm-hmm. it's like you know even Blair White said I think TikTok has this honestly like popularized yeah. it with a huge chunk of young kids that wouldn't yeah. have got into it otherwise you're you're making it like nobody would choose this which I, I guess I would oh, probably kind of I, I would or like you know that it is it's going to be a massive fucking struggle yeah, for you in life in general sure. there's a ton of stuff you're going to have to get past before you can have any kind of mm-hmm. semblance of normalcy in your life like what's the balance between those? Can both of those be true at the same time? Uh, Yeah, for sure. I mean, I love who I am and I wouldn't change it for anything else now. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning, it's not, it's not something lighthearted. It's not like, Oh, I'm going to be trans today. You know, it takes a lot of work to really love yourself and to love everything around you. And, I feel like I transitioned back in 2017 and it was still a very different time before TikTok and everything like that. This is true. So yeah. um, I feel like my experiences are very different than those today. Mm. But I would say that um, it's it's a lot of hard work to really um, understand who you are and um, if this is the right thing to do, which I love it. So Yeah, definitely. Can you remember what the first day uh, was like walking outside presenting? Mm-hmm. as the opposite gender like like what was that like i, I just am imagining <laughs> it in my head as being like the most overwhelming feeling yeah uh i will just say i'm happy that i was passable from the beginning um mm. so i was always pretty feminine before surgery but um it was nerve-wracking i remember I was shaking i was sitting down in class like literally the first day that i finally was like okay i'm gonna go out as myself because you're and, around all these kids that have seen you a hundred times yeah, before exactly. right yeah and they messaged all my all my teachers all my professors and i just sat down and I was just like, I just wanted to not cry. Um, but everyone was really nice. Everyone kind of like picked up on the cues just because like I wasn't making like I wasn't trying to just be in their face about it. And as time went on, it was like almost like nothing ever happened. It was super natural. Definitely. So, OK. And then after you do that, though, you're just kind of living like a totally normal life for however many years uh, uh, for the most part besides, before you get into porn. Yeah. So I graduated um, that same semester in 2017. And so I will say that getting a job was really hard um, because I'm a marketing major and it's very face forward. Um, mm. Talking with clients, talking with um, people face to face or businesses. And I looked visibly trans. Mm. So I feel like I miss out on a lot of opportunities that I would have gotten today. That's interesting. Yeah. Because are, are you resentful about that or do you consider it kind of belie- oh, it like understandable? <laughs> because if you're a company that's in, you know, to making sales, yeah. you kind of just have to like pick the person that you think is going to be the most agreeable sure. to your customer, right? Yeah. And something that's going to sell better. Mm. I mean, now today, I feel like it's very different with how companies go. Uh, sometimes visibly trans nowadays is a good thing, mm. but it definitely wasn't the same thing at 2017. So yeah, um, I wouldn't your customer. resent it at all, though. Right. No, I had a, a girl, like a porn star star on here the other day who had tattoos on her face mm-hmm. and she ha- she does only fans and she told me that uh that she works in corporate for matt cosmetics and that mm-hmm. nobody gives a fuck about the fact that she does only fans or whatever i'm like yeah i wouldn't think that would be an issue i guess yeah i just i'm like yeah. i haven't been in the workforce in a long time i feel like i would have thought that <laughs> it would have been a big deal 20 yeah. years ago but i guess oh yeah, I feel yeah. like 20 years ago or anything because like anything before like 2014 or I feel like it was when like porn was starting to come more in the hands of the people. Yeah. But before that, oh yeah, people would be like, no, no more porn, no nothing. <laughs> yeah, but especially being a, a porn person, I don't want to say star, but a porn performer who uh, has a kid, that's when I really realized how many people are out there who absolutely hate porn. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> I didn't really like fully understand before that. Yeah, it's a lot because especially when you like kids and just a lot of people that like you don't want people to find out or mm-hmm. like to expose somebody to. It's definitely I can see why like porn shouldn't be so like 
readily available. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's the question is like how readily available should it be? Because I've heard people make the argument that there should be systems online where you have to like have this certain type of login in order oh to God. be a, like making porn like extremely yeah. difficult to access unless you've like logged in. Yeah. Which I mean, I don't know. Sounds like it wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing for society, but I can also off the top of my head think of 10 ways that a yeah. little kid could like circumvent that. Exactly. And then uh -huh. also it would undeniably be really bad for the pockets of like pretty much everybody who does it. And I feel like I feel like porn has a lot of catching up to do with regulation in general because they're doing especially like OnlyFans with the consent forms and the IDs. They should have done this since day one. So I feel like that's why there's so much havoc and chaos trying to get everything set the way it should have already been set. Mm. Uh, so we're going through like a transitional period of like what should be and like what should have already been done. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, I mean, I remember reading the articles about uh, Pornhub on the New York Times and stuff and realizing how easy it was for people to just post stuff of Crazy girls who are underage yeah. or revenge porn stuff and just being like kind of horrified. Like, mm -hmm. how could you possibly think that you could run a website like this without right. having, you know. Moderators and everything. It's like having a club without checking IDs <laughs> at the door, except there's, exactly. it's way worse. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Okay. So had you thought about doing porn in the lead up to actually doing it or did this person just kind of introduce you to it so um i had offers way back before my transition but honestly i was like no i i don't know why i had this like misconception like i'm gonna ruin my life my family's gonna like disown me uh my dad knows what i do he's my best friend all my family knows what i do um they're all very very supportive so um i always like dabbled and like maybe i'll do it, maybe i won't and then I was coming to the end of my shipping career because um, I was dancing in and out of clubs. I was doing the same thing every day. And so I was going to move to Chelsea in New York and work for Salesforce. Mm. And I was like, let me just give it one time to do this. And after I shot um, in Vegas for my very first scene three years ago, uh, I had so many companies uh, messaged me. So I shot for Evil Angel and Groovy those first two months. And then COVID hit. So like five months, there's no shooting. And during that time, I'm like, okay, do I want to stay home and just like do nothing? Or do I want to move to Vegas? So I moved to Vegas in June of 2020. Right. And why Vegas instead of L.A.? I hate LA. <laughs> you hate it that much. I hate LA. At first, I thought I was going to be a stepping stone, but I love Vegas so much. Um, it reminds me of like Tampa with no water. <laughs> like, if you take the strip out, it's a very like medium city. Yeah. Uh, so, everyone, pr the circles are pretty small. Flat, uh, spread out, just not a lot going on, yeah, not a lot to look at. <laughs> I, I feel love you. that. <laughs> There's part of me that is like, damn, it would be nice to be able to live out there. Yeah, yeah, it is really nice. Plus, I just bought a house that's so like super peaceful and there's right. like nobody around me, so it's great. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean the house that we rented during AVNs is like mm -hmm. probably four times bigger than my house, yeah. and it's like a third of the price. And I'm just like, damn. I know it's so cheap there. I love it. Yeah. No taxes. <laughs> the crazy world. But so, uh, so were you, you were just like super in demand as soon as you started shooting, or? Uh, surprisingly, I really think that. Because COVID hit, there wasn't a lot of models going into porn, and mm -hmm. a lot of them were going out of porn. So um, I started shooting regu regularly. And uh, July of 2020, uh, for Gender X and all these other trans films, and just started like scene after scene after scene. And then Trans Angels, they're the sister company of Browsers. I was a contract star my very first year for like nine months. Um, so I was just on fire. <laughs> really? Wow. So. How thriving would you say that the trans porn world is in comparison to regular porn or whatever? Like, is it is there like a lot of talent that people are like really excited about? Or do you sometimes look at it and you're like, ah, it's like we need more? Um, I think that's very niche. Okay. Um, but the girls, they definitely blow up faster, I feel like, than cis models just because the pool is smaller. Mm. And um, the fan base is very much more, um, I would say, loyal mm. um, because, like, they've, they've known me since 2019. And pretty much all of the girls, they really keep up with everybody. Um, but I would say that in comparison to um, cis girls, I think that also our careers last longer because there's less of a turnover rate. Mm. Interesting. Less of a turnover rate, right? Just because there's like less of like a new crop of like hot young yeah. chicks coming in. I except the new the new trans girls coming in are fucking hot. Because so really? they've been on. <laughs> they fucking, get hotter and hotter every year. Because they've like, been on hormones since they were younger and younger, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Damn, that's interesting. Yeah. It's going to get like sports <laughs> where it's like the earlier yeah, you get into been, it, the better you are. There's been a lot of really hot girls coming into the industry now, so that's wow. been great. <laughs> interesting. All right, so like, how does all that lead to you winning Performer of the Year? Was that a surprise or like? This year, um, I'm not I'm not trying to do my own horn, but so you were nominated I was like, the year before? I had to win. I was like, I was working so hard for this award all year. Uh-huh. Um, and so after my contract, um, I shot for browsers, Angelo at Angela White was my very first scene for them. It was amazing. Wow. And that was my first girl, 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 girl scene. And so then I just started shooting with all of these girls back to back. I feel like I shoot with more girls now than guys. Really? Uh, yeah. The scenes are better. <laughs> it's better or is it more profitable? Uh, actually, guy girl scenes are more profitable, like on OnlyFans. Okay. But girls are, I feel like, are easy to work with, and I'm a big like lesbian deep down. So <laughs> right. I love it. Um, I remember I asked you, to, I wanted to shoot with Lena for you with Plug Talk, maybe. Yeah. But um, yeah, I started shooting with a lot of girls, and then um, three of my best scenes that were nominated for Expos were all lesbian scenes. Really. But um, also I shot for Dorsal, which is a French site. I was the very first trans girl on there, and then I have three scenes with Brazzers. So um, afterwards, I feel like I just really put in the work this year, Thank- wow. thankfully. Yeah, so how'd you feel when you went up there and, and I won? I was shaking. <laughs> oh, my God, my hands are like this. I was like so scared. Wow. And then I was walking, and all I could think about is, like, don't stutter, don't trip. Um, and so I practiced my speech in my head, um, and a lot of people said my speech was really good. And I called out some of, like, the managers and studios that said, like, trans isn't profitable. Mm. Um, just because, especially nowadays, even on TikTok, you can just see trans is everything. Uh, as much as, like, I hate that it's the middle of every conversation, it is very profitable, which is also good for my pockets. <laughs> Interesting. So you've you've had, like, major adult corporations just basically put that narrative out there to you is that they're just not, mm-hmm. like, they don't feel like it's mm-hmm. worth them putting their time into? Yeah, and I understand that. Like, um, you know your business better than anybody. So, if like, if it's not going to sell, I understand why you wouldn't want to take a chance. But also... Uh, don't come running if like you see the chance later on. Mm. Uh, I had a company that um, as soon as I said that after my um, award, they offered me um, uh, to be signed and I declined it because I'm like, it's just not the direction I want to go in. It's interesting because I could kind of see two different worlds and one in which, you know, browsers and Vixen and everybody has like their own trans imprints versus like another world in which, other studios kind of emerge that specialize in this kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. And do you, like, which one do you think is like ultimately probably going to be better? Probably no matter what, there's gonna, if it's if there's real money to be made, there's going to be competition between all of them, for right? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> and that's ultimately good for you. Yeah, because yeah. um, I talked to my director before, and he's like, "Well, like Gamma Films and Mind <clears throat> Geek, they all have the trans lines." Um, such as like Gender X and stuff instead of like Devil's Film. But um, I feel like I'm always pushing the envelope because I'm like, I, wanna, I don't even want to work with a guy for these studios. I, I don't mind working with like for Vixen Media Group with a girl mm. or in a threesome where we like tag team a girl. That's totally fine because then um, I feel like it relieves that burden <laughs> off the guy if he's feeling uncomfortable. Uh, and even like so many girls want to work with me, even though their managers say like, oh, she has to do trans content. When she's next to me saying, I want to shoot with you so bad. Is that a thing? Uh, it's a big thing. Really? <laughs> so yeah. there's like certain girls that you know are cool with it and others that you kind of know aren't cool well, with it? Well, the managers really are the ones saying like, oh, like she's not cool with it. But like meanwhile, like she is mm. um, because they're trying to steer her away from trans content or like buy content because there's a lot of transphobia and homophobia and porn. And I understand that we are in like a turning point. Like, um, I think five years ago, if you shot with a trans girl, you've been blacklisted. Mm. So it is very, it's like a gray area where we're going through right now. But yeah, I remember girls saying shit about like, I won't shoot with this guy because he's done bisexual porn or gay porn or whatever. Yeah. And like having them get torn to shreds for it. Yeah. But <laughs> that was kind of like a reminder of like, oh, like that is probably not a safe yeah. opinion to throw out there. Yeah. Yeah, um, I understand people's boundaries and their limitations, their yeses or noes, and I respect that. Mm. But um, I understand how some people can be um, mad at it. Right, definitely. So from my time spent skimming your Twitter, Mm -hmm. you're exclusively a bottom no. I take it. No, no? God, oh, okay, I have so okay. many topping. Do you see any of my topping videos? I have so many. <laughs> I guess I just scroll down <laughs> enough. <laughs> 
No, um, I have so many. I have a lot of topping videos. So you can do both. <laughs> but are there a lot of people who do one or the other? Uh, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of girls who bought them. Um, I went through like the biggest topping phase. Like I was like, uh. Hopping is topping. Bounce- topping. topping. Okay. Like, sorry. Like, sometimes like I don't want to get props. I don't want things in my asshole. I'm just like it's it's. A lot of it hurts. Right. <laughs> because as much as, like, some girls like the pain, I don't really like the pain unless I'm in the mood. Yeah, because, like, me and my girl, we, uh, mm-hmm. I love doing anal with her. <laughs> but I just realized that it's just not, like, an everyday thing. Yeah. You know? And, like, especially once you've done porn and you kind of really yeah. realize what could go into it if you really wanted to, wanted to go about it the yeah. right way. So, yeah, it's like I jerk off to anal porn all the time. But POV anal is my favorite, so I feel you. Mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> but then, like, I don't really like almost ever like push her to do it. Yeah, and she like brought it up. If I came home and she had a butt plug in, we're probably gonna like, do uh, it. But <laughs> I'm not gonna like, hey, tonight are we doing it? You yeah, know, like I just doesn't for really. Sure. Yeah, because I just know how much work goes There's into it. It's a lot it. of work. It's a lot of like. It's not even just prepping. It's like diets, everything. But also, I feel like. When I was younger, I used to be like super like bottom only, but now I'm like I'm getting older. <laughs> like the sure fucks me up. You're just growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it's like nice to top. It's like a, it's the same thing. So right. When I was doing the uh, that trans panel I mentioned, there was a quote that somebody said most trans people get into sex work, mm. and I was very surprised to hear everybody at the table agree with that. And then the more I thought about it, I'm like, okay, I guess it's probably pretty in demand and it's not necessarily easy for people to make it happen for free in their personal life so i guess it kind of makes sense uh would you agree with that and do you think that that's like normal or natural i wouldn't say most i would say many um because there are so many like older trans women um that aren't of like prime age to do sex work um and then also um i feel like a lot of trans i don't know anything really about trans men and the statistics on that but i I don't think that a lot of trans men get into sex work i think that might be trans women Mm -hmm. but don't quote me on that i think you're probably Uh, mostly right but i feel like i feel like they would say that just because of like what they know around them but i don't know the the statistics but um in my experience even with everything with my career education, um, I would always just make more money and be more available doing sex work um, than staying in with a marketing firm. Mm. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Like doing porn for a living versus like having a more normal career? Like, is it just like way better in every way (laughs) to you? Or is there a sense in which it feels a little bit less fulfilling? Uh, I love it, honestly, because I keep my personal and my sex, like my personal life and my work life very separate. And they're both fulfilling. Like, I have my sex life that's not on camera. I have my love life that's not on camera. Um, and so it's nice to keep them separated so my porn career can still flourish and be really, really fun and it not have to feel like a job. So you're in day. a relationship? Uh, I am in a relationship, yes. Okay. But do you, ch- you choose to hide the details of it from the uh, internet? No, no, no. I, I, we're pretty open. Um, we met. Uh, we've been together for over a year now. Um, and he's going into producing, so he does movies. He also does uh, sex work as well for content. Uh-huh. Um, but he is um, he's a really good visionary. So, so you really have to love. say for content to be like, not an escort. Yeah, not an escort. <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly. Because like there's so many different types of sex work. Even shipping a sex work. Mm. But do you, um, do you, at this point in your life, is escorting out of the question? Is that something that you look at as not kosher for what you're doing with yourself? Um, not really. It's not something that I do anymore. So right. <laughs> What, what, it's just not worth it money wise or it's uh, just I just don't want to meet random people anymore <laughs> I don't believe you this sounds scary as fuck to me uh, yeah I feel like um, I rub shoulders with like some of the like most I guess important men like in politics and music and anything so it's like I don't even need to do that anymore mm. uh, but of course it is a vital part of many people's lives right yeah so okay you're saying you spend time with all these uh like important people and everything is it is there like a like a, a world out there in which you know like powerful guys this is just like an overwhelmingly popular kink for them or i don't know if it's right to call it a kink. Uh, <laughs> no i feel like for them kink is correct okay i do think that it's a fetish i think it's a kink a lot of times um i've had people ask to like see me in public and uh, not public and private uh that wouldn't see me in public so i would say no right but so do you 
is that insulting or is that something that you'd be kind of open to? Because we always say like, you know, for, <laughs> for a girl, her pussy is her passport <laughs> in the sense that like you want to go to Drake's house. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're a good looking girl, chances are your pussy is what's going to get you there. And yeah. a smart woman is going to kind of use those opportunities sparingly or intelligently yeah. and try to like, you know, get into a position in life without necessarily just like giving away their value exactly. right away. Right. I would say the same thing. So like uh, use what your mama gave you, but also you don't have to give it all up. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Cause uh, okay. So the, the other day, uh, one of the people who was on the trans panel, like as soon as she like was in a moment where nobody was listening, she just wanted to tell me, some super famous guy that she had been contacted by on yeah. Instagram or whatever. Is there kind of a thrill about that? Uh, I feel like once you've been around enough um, famous guys, that they're all the same. <laughs> really? They're all the same? What? They're just uh, full of like, themselves? They just have money. They just honestly. want pleasure? Uh, no, they're not full of themselves. There's been a lot of really, really nice guys out there. Okay. Uh, but it's like they want the same thing. They want a good time. And it's not even sexual sometimes, just hanging out, just like, they just want to live life just like everyone else. And like having that status, I would say that most people who don't have status give them like that thrill and that like importance when it's, they really are just normal people. Right. Interesting. So, okay. But if you hook up with someone Mm -hmm. who you assume or know that they don't want this to become part of the public record. Mm -hmm. Are you just going to honor that forever? Or is it kind of like up in the air? Like you can Uh, just talk about it. I feel feel like like I wouldn't want anyone talking about my business either. Right. Uh, So I feel like at the end of the day, um, at least run it by them. Yeah. Yeah. I would think so too. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, okay. Where, where can you, take this career from here like are you just working for the studios or are you at a point in your life where you're mostly doing your own thing and do you have like plans on sort of like building your own like a lot of the girls have like sites that are like kind of they produce mm-hmm. all sorts of different content under their own brand name like what, what, yeah. do, you, what do you so think? um since i turned down the offer from one of the agencies i really want to start my own and call it rose royals mm. uh that is specifically for trans women um and then start my own production company called rose royalties productions it's like one of my biggest dreams uh and i think that there's just like a lot of blank space in the porn world that trans girls aren't getting the care that they need or the attention mm. and that there are some studios that um, just haven't explored some of the things in the acting that trans girls can do um like i said that my my boyfriend does uh producers he's a producer um and so like his whole thing is creating movies and that's like one of my biggest goals too is, is to go into mainstream really yeah interesting because cool. uh, does that all of a sudden feel like a real possibility for a, a trans woman like yourself because there's just like a bunch of different examples of that popping up in mainstream culture that i don't think really existed like five years ago maybe even? yeah exactly um uh, i don't like like re- um what's the word relying on like identity politics but the good thing about nowadays is there's a lot more acting roles for trans individuals both men and women mm. and stories that people are like, more apt to like listening to Right, yeah, because if it's like if you want to do innovative storytelling at this point, I mean, it's clearly something that people are interested in. Mm-hmm. You watched all of Euphoria, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's never anything cool about being a grown man talking about watching <laughs> Euphoria, which I love. <laughs> but I do. I kind of feel like the subtext of the show is like we're gonna make you love this trans character in the show. Oh, and meanwhile, it, she became the most hated <sighs> bitch ever. Okay, well, maybe towards the end, yeah, but like. <laughs> I just like myself. I, I felt like that was almost the mission of the show. Is like even if you don't think that you fuck with trans people, we're gonna kind of show you what their life might be like. And the the person they cast just like did such a crazy job to me of yeah. just m- seeming so likable and lovable. Besides yeah, yeah. Any and then season one, she was very, plot very twist. Likeable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot yeah, that that was like an outdated uh, take on the show. Now that I've seen <laughs> season two, yeah. <laughs> But, um, okay, so, like, have you had those kind of conversations about doing the, the more mainstream type of stuff, or how do you even go about getting into that? Yeah, it's uh, it's still a struggle because of the porn background, but mm. I love that, like, Netflix and Amazon Prime and all these other things, like, they're not backed up by, like, NBC or Fox or any of these things where, like, they have to have, like, a good person, like, a good, like, all-American, no porn background. Mm. Uh, And now I feel like, I mean, like, Cardi B and all of them have their own shows and, like, you can probably find their pornos on X videos. (laughs) Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I think about that all the time. (laughs) Like, or even uh, Chloe Cherry. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, 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 for sure. I, I shot with her with Lena back in the day, way before Euphoria. Mm-hmm. Like, didn't, nothing really like stood out to me that crazy yeah. about it. And then all of a sudden, she's in this position, and uh, because she got the role in Euphoria, yeah, frame there's a lot scene. of porn stars in Euphoria. Actually, I think like there's like four other ones that aren't really big. Yeah, some of the guys too. Yeah, but then I remember. Uh, that like then she blew up and like Lena was telling me that she was on this podcast and that she was talking about why she stopped doing porn and she was just like well you know now i'm doing this like louis vuitton ambassadorship and like she's just making like absurd amounts of money i assume off of just doing this kind of stuff so she fell back on it but i don't know it is kind of trippy to have someone just be like a really popular actress who comes from porn Mm -hmm. and it's a topic of conversation but it doesn't feel like it's like the only topic of conversation right their rise to fame like their other things that um amount to their success yeah whereas like kim kardashian like became famous from one from sex, sex tape, tape <laughs> which is like in retrospect kind of crazy doesn't yeah. really seem like it would have happened the same way today mm-hmm. we're all a little too jaded not not not, not at all it's so different because i think it was so like taboo and i can only imagine chris saying like we have to use this now yeah no I mean, she's a marketing genius <laughs> no but, I, but when i was in i was when i was there at the avns i saw ray j one night oh my God, and, really? and he oh, goes shit. you here for avn I'm like, yeah. He goes, I've been nominated twice. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you weren't a, really a willing participant in it, were right. you? Yeah. That's or it's released at the, the very fire. least. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So five years ago, six years ago, the trans thing was like barely in the public consciousness. And now it feels like it's constantly in the conversation yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of like this right wing football that they just throw around like hey pay attention to this you'll you'll be entranced <laughs> by this don't talk about anything else let's just talk about this trans thing over and over it's kind of fucking weird yeah. how does it feel to have your identity just constantly being like the thing that they're discussing on fox news or whatever exhausting yeah <laughs> i say this every day i hate being in the middle of every conversation mm. but it doesn't even like it's all of a sudden it's just thrown here and thrown there like i feel like everyone i got along like more back in the 2010s Mm. (laughs) Uh, i feel like um even i feel like no one really mentioned that i was trans at the beginning of my transition so it was very different um i i'm hoping that we're going in the right direction today Uh, i can't say that we are not Mm. but um there's a lot of changes happening. But when it's I so even crazy. when we we're uh, scheduling that trans panel, I kind of <laughs> mentioned it to you, like, would you be interested in coming on it or whatever? Because we we're scheduling this, yeah. and you were kind of like, eh, like I don't think so. Like, is there? Are you not mega political or not interested in necessarily making that part of the public discourse around you? Yeah, I wouldn't like dive into like my political beliefs, but um, I'd say that I'm very. I wouldn't even say I'm a centrist. I feel like I'm an equalist. Mm. I feel like it's all semantics. But um, I was uh, agreeing with like what Alessa was saying, and then also with Blair, um, and then of course Buck Angel's an icon. Um, yeah. I always love him, uh, and he's been around forever. Mm. So it's been, um, yeah. I just feel like nowadays there's so many, there's so much information, and there's so many polarizing information in groups. Especially on TikTok. I would definitely blame TikTok for the rise of everything. Yeah, no, definitely. But And, and does it kind of feel like Mm-mm. there's this like expectation that you're supposed to like be in the mix of having these conversations all the oh, time? And, sure. and you're just kind of like not that interested? <laughs> yeah, or like um, supposed to take a side or like be like left, um, like liberal or left like leaning. Um, even though I think that there's a lot of infighting within the trans community mm. that most people don't talk about. Um, the trans umbrella is really big, and I feel like cisgendered people like you like, and everyone doesn't really understand the differences because there's never been definitions laid out for everybody. Um, like, I wouldn't consider myself transgender. I'd be a transsexual because I'm specifically altering my body to live as my sex, mm. uh, like, which is female. Um, and I feel like there's always like a, an argument like trans women aren't women because women are this. And I'm like, trans women are trans women and cis women are cis women. I think that we're so used to saying that women are, um, that cis women are women without the prefix. But um, trans women can never be a cis woman, such as a cis woman can never be a trans girl. We're both two sides of the same coin of womanhood. We both experience sexism. We both experience um, everything that has to do with a woman besides bleeding and having a baby and also having a childhood as a girl. Um, And I think that most binary trans women like me, um, we're not delusional and we don't we know who we are as people. Mm. Like we lived our life as children as like a little boy and then grew up. Some of us transitioned sooner, some of us transitioned later. But at the end of the day, I feel like um 
we, we live our lives and you can't say that we are men, but a lot of us want to assimilate into culture. Well, because I think one of the things that gets the biggest reaction from people on the right or even people in the middle is just the slogan, trans women are women, which yeah. people love to tweet that alone. <laughs> and it's like, listen, for all functional purposes, I... I agree, and I would absolutely treat every trans person that I know for the rest of my <laughs> life as their preferred gender yeah. and everything. But this that has like a political catchphrase. It's, it's the worst. It actually. seems a little weird because so many really people weird. are just kind of like repelled away from it because right. they're just like, well, okay, like we'll treat you that way, but that is not technically accurate, right? This is yeah. a little bit of an oversimplification. And that's why I also say uh, a woman and female are two different things. Even though a woman is a, like a, a female woman or something like that or a female individual. I forget what the definition is. But I feel like woman is social and then female is biological. Mm -hmm. So trans women, we all know that we are biologically male, but we're socially women. And I, like, I feel like the discourse around that, that most people are like, oh, you're a man. And everything, it's like we we know what we are deep inside, but like if I go out into the real world and no one's gonna I'm gonna take off my makeup, I'll take off my hair extensions, uh I'll wear like I'll wear sweats and like a hoodie and have my hair up. And mm. no one's gonna think that I'm a man. I just live my life as a woman every single day without even trying, like many of us do. Yeah, um, is that almost kind of weird? Because I could imagine like you living next door to your neighbors for like long periods <laughs> of time and they never have any fucking clue. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden something happens that they get like tipped off. They, like, like see I, through the window, like me like walking around yeah. naked. They're like, oh my God. Yeah, like, or, or like a, never mind a Google search uh, or something. And well, then they're, yeah. Honestly, it happens so many times. I was getting my makeup done for trancing and my makeup artist doing my makeup. And then like I was talking about like my dick. And then the artist was just like, Oh, you're the trans model, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> hi, <laughs> because like people just don't know, right? Um, and also, I think that it's not only just like the surgery I had because I was still a passable before, but also just like the feminine energy and just like when you walk into the room, there's no like question about like, oh, I'm this a man, is that a woman, is that any of that? I think that it's just very natural, right? So when it comes to passing, because that was another thing I was interested <laughs> yeah. in the conversation uh, during that panel, yeah, it's like. On one hand, I feel like some trans people seem kind of like allergic to the idea of really like judging each other fundamentally based on how passing they are. Yeah. But then there's also like the we spa thing that they've brought up as an example where it's like if you are making no attempt to pass, then you certainly shouldn't be entering into women's spaces and Back. just to freak people yeah. out, you know, so it's like. How, how is that like sort of graded and is there that like weird thing where like you you want to pass and you want to like uh, let other people know that you feel like they're passing but then at the same time is there's something kind of ugly about like acknowledging it too much huh oh you're talking about like clocking like kind of like that uh so, sure okay yeah. so pass clock start. i might be using uh, my yeah, words yeah, wrong here <laughs> sorry so uh, <laughs> clocking is like someone acknowledging it and the passing is like if you pass or not but uh, okay. uh so i would say i would say that i'm as much as a woman as my first time taking my estrogen as i am today but the social construct and my perception is very different. So I feel like a lot of times, like, oh, don't misgender somebody. It's like it's, sometimes it's not your fault if you just perceive them that way. Mm. Um, so I would say that um, I can be misperceived. Uh, so if you misperceive me as a man, like at the beginning of my transition, I don't think it's any fault of yours. But if you, if I say, I'm like, hey, can you, I, I would rather go by she, her, uh, like I'm trying, you know, my hardest. And if you still want to call me a man, then that's misgendering. That's like an asshole thing to do. Yeah. But if someone's really trying, if they're trying to like live their 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 life as their preferred gender, and this is taking non-binary out of the question, this mm. is talking about binary trans women and men. Um, I do think that like it is our duty to mention that, but not in a weird way. And like, oh, by the way, I, I just want to use she, her pronouns or he, him, instead of saying, you have to call me this because the hostility and that aggressiveness doesn't get anywhere. And it just creates a barrier that now nobody's getting along. Mm. Um, but the world has gone around for so long. Trans people have been around for a very long time, but still um, being a minority, I think that a lot of times you have to speak up for yourself, but not in a hostile way. Right. Yeah, yeah <clears throat> definitely. So, OK. A lot of people probably want to know. Well, I can inform <laughs> you. Yes, she still has a penis. You already mentioned it multiple <laughs> times. Is there any part of you that wants to 
say goodbye and cancel that out of your life or is it you're just rocking with it for life uh so i had my balls cut off uh yeah back in 2017 i was on daily mail for it too wow so. i did not know this was a thing yeah okay. it's called an orchiectomy so i was taking spiractolone which is a testosterone blocker and it was giving me like the worst pain like neck pain back pain i felt so dry uh my joints were hurting so i was like you know what let me just cut them off so um, I had them removed to really help with my like stability, my hormonal, um, to keep it all even and stable. Um, and so I don't have to take testosterone blockers. I just take my estrogen, uh, my progesterone, uh, which helps with breast growth and your libido, mm. uh, and then a couple of other things. So, really? Yeah. Wow. That's dope. But uh, at the end of the day, I would, I would keep it because especially like... I'm strictly bisexual. I love men and women. Uh, so I just, I like having But it. so no balls <laughs> equals no cum. No, I can still cum. Oh, <laughs> yeah. less? It's crazy. So a biology lesson. So oh. your balls, I think your balls have the sperm. And then right. your prostate has the semen. Okay. So the, it's the white stuff and the clear stuff. So that's why if you come and it stays there for like 10 minutes, it just turns clear because the sperm's dead. So the liquid, so it literally comes, it's like honey almost. It's like super sticky. It's like glue. I feel like I should know more about what my own <laughs> body is doing. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, it's really crazy. So, um, no, I still orgasm. I still have everything. It's it's honestly having my balls removed is more of um aesthetic thing. I feel like it's more of a female orgasm. Honestly, I don't know. Really, uh, but it's more full body. I can feel it in my face. I can feel it in my like my, my toe. It's like full body is crazy. Wow. And then also, I feel like it's instead of one and done, it can go back to back. Really. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> wow, technology. That's amazing. <laughs> um, okay, but so these are a couple of tweets. I saw this one tweet I thought was interesting on your uh, page. You mm -hmm. said, keeping a healthy, personal, off-camera sex <laughs> life is so important, y'all. I don't fuck unless there's a camera. It's so unhealthy and not a flex. Please see a therapist. Yeah. <laughs> and I really agree with this a lot because yeah. I have a lot of conversations on here where I'm trying to get girls to like talk about their actual sexual desires. Mm -hmm. Because that's probably going to engage the people at home. And it's like they have nothing to comment on besides what they've done on camera. <laughs> which is dope for sure. Yeah. But it's just kind of really it's obviously like not the same thing, yeah. right? It's like what do you do at, how, at your home versus what do you do at like an office job? It's like yeah. completely different things. Yeah. So um, they do overlap a lot. But it's uh, sex is just always better off camera. Mm. As much as I love an audience. Um, off camera, you don't have to open up. You can just really enjoy. You can do some freaky shit. Um, I remember at one time uh, I was with this. Uh, she's really, really freaky. But uh, she was literally like jacking me off and then like licking inside my nose. And I literally felt like I was having like a brain orgasm. Inside the nose. Yeah, it was really, wow. really weird. <laughs> like I would never do that on camera. I feel like it wasn't <laughs> until like my like late thirties where I really figured out how to like take time having sex. Yes, oh, that's the best. <laughs> like I tell my girl, I'm like, we gotta like schedule an hour tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, like really just chill and like just allow it to happen nice and slowly. That's like what you you feel like earn that by being with somebody yeah. for a long time, like feeling yeah, like a hundred percent comfortable. Yeah, you don't have to prep like the pop shot and everything. It just can just happen naturally. It's oh yeah. Good. I mean, on camera, I like it because, like, <laughs> fucking on camera, aside from the fact that I got to hit that 10 minute mark for OnlyFans, right. she, if I do 9.59, she will scold me. Yeah. And I'll be like, bro, add at the end of the final cut timeline, put, put your, your at for like two <laughs> seconds, and it's going to look like the Stay clip out. is 10 minutes, whatever. But uh, yeah, it's, it's fun, but it's not, it's, it's very different. Yeah, yeah for sure. And it's I way more sensual. I haven't had an off-camera threesome in multiple years. Holy shit. And sometimes I just like, I'm like, it would be weird to do this without a camera in my hand again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and plus, yeah, you are holding the camera. Like, I don't really hold it. So it's much different for guys and girls. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not always holding it. So yeah. definitely when there's a cameraman, I like it more, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because there's like every angle, it's nice. There's like four angles that work <laughs> if you're filming with your hand. Yeah. Like with your hand, there's just very few <laughs> like things that actually look good. And there's a lot of sex positions that everybody likes doing that are basically not existent if yeah, you're filming it sure. yourself. Yeah. Oh my god. Plus like the leg away and everything like that and like going under. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> Alright, this is the other tweet I saw that I wanted to mention. You said after an analysis of the porn I watch, I am indeed a F slur, which you you it. edited it out <laughs> <laughs> yourself. Um Oh, and so my, that's your your taste. And everyone, I'm, everyone's agreeing. Like every girl in there is just like, same, same, same. Because I'm like, 
I don't know. Uh, so Kendra Lust was my sexual awakening. Mm. Um, in 2020, I was still like, I was still scared of women of like, oh, I want to be you versus like, I want to be with you. And I asked her because she is, oh, she's so hot. Um, <laughs> she, I was like, can you teach me how to eat pussy? And she's like, sure. And taught me and it was like, oh, it was so kinky, it was so hot. And so ever since then, I feel like that confidence just really... Blew up my career too, um, because it's just been it's just so nice. So now a lot of my porn that I watch, like, even like I said, POV anal, I like it when I watch like a cis girl get fucked in her ass. I don't know, I don't know why. It just does something for really? me. Really? So you? Because it's like it's like naughtier. But like, that's the least <laughs> f slur thing that I can imagine you watching. Yeah, I know, but also plus like the women like licking everything. I love a girl with a strap on. Cause like there's only so much girls can eat pussy, but like with strap on, it's just so hot to sing everything. <laughs> right, <laughs> definitely. So okay, where are you at in your life at this point? Like, what what, do you, what is important to you? What are you trying to really accomplish in terms of like the coming year or years? You're still like very early in your career. I'm I was very, very surprised. Early. Yeah. yeah, I'm still a baby. Mm. <laughs> um, so after winning the AVN Performer of the Year and then also Expos Performer of the Year back to back. Oh, um, wow. I feel, yeah, I, didn't know that I am one. so happy. Yeah, so. Um, I can finally feel like I'm still gonna go really hard on porn, but I don't have to um, work so hard. I feel like in LA, I really want to start self directing my work and um, start going on streaming, uh, Twitch, and stuff like that. But mm. just start creating more like artistic and like just sexy films instead of just porn. Like, this is a scene and this is a scene. I really want to make like a porn movie mm. that would just be super hot, especially through like my agency and through my production studio that I'm creating. Uh, I just think that it would just be so great. But the next few years, I want to go more into directing, uh, managing girls, and just creating like just a really fucking hot, awesome team. Mm. Of women who just like know how to work with the camera are good and also just make something better. That's just I adore Vixie Media Group. I love how much they put in their stories, their sets, everything. It just looks beautiful, and that's what I want to do. Mm, definitely. Oh, it's dope to hear for sure. You're still young. You got plenty of time. Yeah. <laughs> and if you just started winning awards, I feel like yeah, you, yeah that's I'm like, just not hitting my stride. You have a whole like segment of your life to come after all this for yeah. sure. Yeah, because I'm always trying to tell my girl like. It's tempting to judge yourself based on your OnlyFans earnings. Yeah. But that that just doesn't encompass everything that you could potentially be doing oh, yeah, in sure. life. Because it's as a YouTuber, it's kind of tempting like that too. To yeah. like pay attention to how much money you're making from YouTube and not pay attention to the entirety of your business. Oh, yeah, sure. You know? Because it's like your bread and butter, like your most stable thing is like OnlyFans, I feel like. And then everything else can kind of ebb and flow. Yeah. Um, so it's just it the easiest be. to look at. It's <laughs> yeah, just exactly. the most it's, fun. It's set up. <laughs> Whereas like if you had like another income stream like let's say you owned a restaurant and you wanted to like know how it was doing well you could get like expenses and everything i'm just like your your accountant <laughs> could give you like a report here and there but it's not going to be as easy yeah. as just like only fans flip like just refreshing it you know exactly. it's it's too easy to look <laughs> yeah. at that's why you have to hold back and yeah. not yeah um okay shit well thanks for coming on the show awesome thank you appreciate it uh yeah anybody you want to thank anybody you want to shout out uh especially my boyfriend short daddy uh, my team and um, I don't know. I feel like that's really the biggest people. Except for, I guess my dad too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you so much for having me on here. For sure, it was an honor. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks so much, Emma Rose. Check her out. I'm sure you know where to search. <laughs> oh, it's Emma Rose. It's out there. No <laughs> jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, slash OnlyFans, Instagram, etc. Like, comment, subscribe. We out.